from you. That nothing could stop us from loving you, Jesus. Because if you did it before, you will do it again in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. We thank you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord. That nothing can stop us from praising the name of Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy, God. And your word can never come back void. Because if you said that it is done, it is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. And if it hasn't came yet, and if it hasn't manifested yet, then that means that we are not ready for it yet. But hallelujah, we thank you as we're standing still and we're standing firm on the word of your word and we trust your word because we know that you are a living God and you answer our prayers because you said the prayers of the righteous avail much. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just glorify your name, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way, have your way. We thank you, Abba. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. We just honor you, Jesus. We just honor you, Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord, because we are more than conquerors. We're not just conquerors. But we're more than conquerors. We can defeat this thing because we have won already. When you were on that cross and you came down and you rose again, Jesus, you are not a Christ that is dead, but you are a living Christ that lives through us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way, Lord. Oh, glorify your name, Lord. Oh, the hearts, I feel the hearts are aching, Jesus. I feel the hearts are aching, Jesus. I feel the tears are rolling down their faces, Lord. But I need them to know that you are great and merciful, God. I need them to know that you have answered their prayers. I need them to know that it is already done, my God. But we just got to walk through this thing. We got to keep our faith. We got to stand firm and have the full armor of God on as we trust in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. It is power in your name, Lord. They cannot take your name from our lips. They're trying, though nations and nations are trying to rise up against you, Lord. But they will fail and they will stumble because the mighty Jesus, the mighty Jesus that we serve, that we serve, he is the stronghold of everything. And can nothing defeat our God because our God created everything. He even created the devil. The devil cannot even withstand our Jesus, Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Glorify your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They didn't come to hear me, but we came to glorify you, Lord. It's not about me, but it's about you, Lord. And we just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Generational curses are broken by thanking Jesus. Trials and tribulations are broken by thank you, Jesus. Emotions are broken by thanking Jesus. Depression is broken by thanking Jesus. Healings come and manifest us through thanking Jesus. Hallelujah. Through thanking him. And we thank you, Lord. And we honor you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit, have your way. Cleanse the souls of the people, Lord. Cleanse the souls of the people, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We don't care who think we're crazy because you said we are a part of the royal priesthood, that we are peculiar people anyway. So we're not of this world anyway, hallelujah. That's why we have so many trials and affliction because we don't belong here. Oh, glorify your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. I'm just, I want to press through. I want to press through. 
But the Holy Spirit just has me right here in a grateful state of mind, in a grateful state of mind because my spirit fills your spirit. And some of you are just being tormented by the things that you are going through. You're being tormented by life and you just got to know that it's in your prayers that you press through. It is in your prayers. It's in your thanksgiving that you press through, that nothing, no circumstances cannot take over you when you have a praise because praise is a choice it is a choice it is a choice circumstances happen but praise supplication and prayer it is a choice to be happy Ladies and gentlemen, it is a choice to be happy. And we just thank you, God. We just thank you, God. Even if we can't get the word out today, we still want to just glorify your name because it's the, it's the thinking of you. It's the thanksgiving that keeps us, keeps everything manifesting. It is the thanksgiving that keeps us sane. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. We don't need a church. We don't need a church. We are the church. Hallelujah. We are the church. We are the church. We are the church. We are the church. Hallelujah. We are the church. Christ lives in us. The Holy Spirit resides in us. We cannot be shaken by circumstances. It is the circumstances that are trying to shake you because the devil know without shaking you that you can't receive what God has for you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why the Bible says it is a mind thing. It is a mind thing. It is a mind thing. And if he shifts your mind, then you have shift your stance. And he cannot do anything in you when you shift your stance. And that's why it is important that whatever you go through, that you stay in gratification and you find a way to thank your Jesus. Because he had you when you was a sinner. He had you when you was out there and you should have been dead. You should have had HIV. You should have had, you should have had the diabetes should have killed you. Oh, glory to God. You shouldn't have peace in the circumstances that you're going through. But we serve a God, a perfect God that comes through and does what he says he's going to do. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Because without you, we are nothing. Because without you, nothing is possible. Because without you, we are lost. We are damaged without you. We are not even damaged goods without you. We're polluted. We are damaged without you. But because of your grace and because of your mercy, we are able to stand here today and we are able to be in gratitude that whatever we're going through, that we can still thank you. We can still thank you. We can still thank you. It is not that bad that we cannot thank you because you are a good, good God. You are a great, great God. You are good and no devil in hell can stop me from praising you. Can no one stop me from praising you? I don't need a great word all the time. I don't need somebody to make me feel good for a second. All I need is the Holy Spirit and just to thank you, Jesus. And that right there would take me throughout my day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus, because we know that the affliction and the affirmities come, and we know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But we know that you have given us authority to stop over him, to stop on his head for the devil that he is. We have authority over him. We have the power to declare and to decree a thing, and it is time that we stop living like peasants. We stop living like we're beneath and not above. We got to stop living like we got just filled with sound and pitified songs every day. And we got to start living like the princes and the queens and the princesses that we are and the kings that we are. We are of a royal priesthood. And he said, Jesus said when he left that we can do everything he did and more 
It is in us. And it start with praises. Hallelujah. It start with praises. It starts with the praises. That's why the Israelites 11 day journey took 40 years because they did not master the praises. They were too busy complaining about what they didn't have and was not bright and wise enough to thank God for what they did have. Because whatever you're going through, it cannot take you down. He won't allow it. He won't allow it, but the enemy has come to try to make us think otherwise. And I'm here this afternoon to tell you to take your mind back, Lord. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Whatever the enemy has tried to come and take from you, you got to take it back. You got to take it back. And it starts with gratification. Yes, Lord. It starts with gratification. It starts with knowing who you belong to. Who do you belong to? And you got to know that thing. You got to trust that thing. You got to trust him and you got to be obedient some of you are going through it because you're not obedient and then some of you are going through it because you are obedient and this new thing that God is going to use to strengthen you and he's going to take you to the other side even though the enemy is trying to make you think that this is it and let me tell you something we serve a God that already sees the end we just got to walk through that thing it is already done hallelujah it is already done you just got to walk through that thing and you got to trust God. You got to trust him. 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 I am telling you, I am living it. My life is not peaches and cream. I want to tell you something to every person that was born and destined to lead. Everybody has a purpose. And that's why I tell you guys all the time to pray for the leaders. Because when you are called to lead and to teach, you receive more havoc than a little bit. It was when I really said yes and decided to be dedicated to our Abba is when or hell broke loose against my life but I serve a God that gives me the strength to carry on and to tell that devil one more hit cause I can take it baby I can take it baby as long as I serve a Christ that lives within me I can take it baby because I know on the other side of that thing is nothing but glory because my God says we go from glory to glory to glory to glory hallelujah thank you Jesus I need somebody to show. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That you are not alone. That's why the Bible says. That you pray for your brethren. Because they too are going through it. We are all going through it. But it's how you respond to that thing. That you will see the other side. And how long. You will stay in that thing. See, the way that you respond determines the length of your tests and trials and tribulations. Because remember, the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. He can't do nothing that we really allow. He can't. He can't. Because it's designed. It is designed. Come on, Holy Spirit, help me. It is designed to distract you and to frustrate you. So if you're not wise you will fall into the deception of the enemy and now you done gain a whole nother trial and now you done, you done caused yourself to be in a whole nother situation and you done stop the, the rhythm of the process because like T.D. Jake says it's a rhythm and when you allow the devil to come in to kill steal and destroy then you have stopped the process you have stopped the process remember our bible says our Bible says that all things work out for those who love the Lord. So it's going to work out. It's going to work out. You have no full fast and still glorify God. 
And then the next thing you know, you have a, a house full of food. You have no money. It's okay. You still glorify God and watch the favor that comes that'll blow your mind and the doors that he opened that will blow your mind because you didn't even need the money. Your bills is due. Still praise him and watch him work the thing out and the consumer reports and the people will be calling you and telling you, I don't know how it happened, but you don't know this anymore. We serve a God that can do the unthinkable, but we're limiting him. We're limiting him. What do you think about those people that are in third world countries that don't, they live in tents and stuff like that. They don't even have bills. They didn't even have the type of trials that we go through. Amen. This was all designed. It's all designed to distract us. It is designed to distract us. And you got to be smart and you got to be strategic about this thing. And you got to be intentional. I'm going to praise him even when it looks like I shouldn't. Even when it looks like I should complain. Because think about it. When he was taking them through the, when, the, when, the, when God was taking them through the desert. He already knew what he had for them. He already knew what he had in place for them. And though he probably could have took them the other route, he was taking them to the desert to see who, who, how they would respond for one, who was worthy enough for the promise for two, and to strengthen them so they can see the glory, so they can see the impossible things. He was giving them bread from the heavens. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody, parting the Red Sea so they can walk through. It is designed to build you up. It is not designed to break you down. It's not designed to break you down. So whatever you're going through, whatever trial and tribulation that is trying to take a hold of you, you got to stand firm and you got to know who you serve. You got to know who you serve. You got to know who you serve. Stop saying that you serve God and you love God and you know nothing about him. Because if you knew the God that you say that you know, you would stand firm and you know this too shall pass. Even with tears in your eyes, even crying and you might don't understand what's going on, but you know that your God, what Proverbs, uh, uh, Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 says, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the knowledge God and he will make your path straight get into this word for yourself get into this word get into this word get into this word read this thing read this thing read this thing read it till it falls apart read it till it falls apart because guess what knowledge is power Knowledge is power. And when you hold on to the word of God, you can see the manifestation of him. <clears throat> yes, Janet, but I got to be real with you. It's, it's some things that you are doing that is not in alignment with the word. See, we got... We have to remember that there's a, a, a protocol to things. You have some people that are suffering because of the righteousness sake. They're suffering. They are obedient and they're suffering because the devil is coming to try to kill, steal, and destroy the purpose and the plans of God. And then you have some people that are suffering because of the disobedience and they're suffering because of the things uh, uh, and the situations that they're allowing themselves to get into. Amen. So we got to be, we got to be, we have to be held ourselves accountable and we have to be focused. Amen. So don't lose your faith, but start taking an inventory around the things that are going on in your life and see what needs to be going out and see what needs to stay in, see what needs to come in and what needs to go out. If that makes sense to you, Janet, I'm just being real. I'm just speaking what the Holy Spirit is telling me to speak. We got to learn to be in obedience with Christ. We got to learn that we got to put down the cigarettes. We got to learn that we got to put down the gossiping. We got to learn that we got to put down the fornication. We got to put down the doubt. We got to put down the fear because these are not things that are, are, are from our Abba. These are the things that the world has off of us. Amen. We got to put down the drinking. We got to stop getting drunk and then want to tell somebody a thing or two that's on our mind. We got to put down the weed. We don't need the weed for a spiritual insight because we have the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. We got to really live this thing out. Come on, somebody. We got to really live this thing out. 
We got to live this thing out. We got to live this thing out. We got to live this thing out. We got to walk this walk the right way. So now when we're facing, because this was really part two of sufferings in vain, but the Holy Spirit has, he has his hand on me and I'm going to let him have his way. Because when you think about it, we're talking about sufferings anyway. That's what he's talking about. The things that we go through, but we keep our joy in it. We don't lose our joy. We don't lose our peace because it is a choice. Remember, God said that he came to give us life and give it abundantly. And that is peace. So many of us have turned to the tangible. We turn to the tangible and we think that the tangible is what sustain us. And the tangible does not sustain us. It is the spiritual things that sustains us. Why did I bury my husband before 30? Why did I just bury my 21 year old sister? Then God had the nerve to say, preach that eulogy. Why do I go through lack after lack after lack? Why was my daughter sick right after I had to deal with my husband being dead? Why did I have to go through four? Force to care after force to care, rejection after rejection, but still sitting here with a sane mind. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Why? Because God is a good God and he gives you what he promises you. And it's only God that has me standing here with a full deck. A full deck, not woo somewhere. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There are people that don't even have a full deck. They don't have a full deck. People are losing their minds. So while we are crying over what bill we can't pay, we're crying over a sickness when we need to say, God, you know something you said that I am covered by your stripes. I am healed by your stripes. So I'm going to take this healing in the spiritual realm. Let me explain something to you. And that's why I tell y'all to get my book. I did not heal my daughter off of medicine. And I'm not saying medicine is wrong because Luke was a physician. When you read your Bible, we come to learn, hallelujah, come on, Holy Spirit, that Luke was a doctor, amen, but I use the word of God to heal my baby. I anointed her head with oil. I spoke over her healing until the healing took place. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I did not wait. Matter of fact, when the doctors were telling me, the doctors were telling me to give her medication that down the line would have messed her up. Come on, somebody. But I tapped into this thing here and I trusted it. I trusted the word. I trusted the word. And I, the word healed my baby. Because let me tell you how the devil works. The type of thing that she was going through was a general, it wasn't just a generational curse that she broke, but it was a, it was an affliction that can stop her from having children. It was having her moody. So the devil wanted me and her to be at conflict, constant conflict with one another. She was feeling insecure because it was changing her appearance. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I used the word of God to heal that baby. I anointed that baby head with oil. Don't tell me this isn't real. Don't tell me this isn't real. And I'm standing before you going after affliction after affliction. And I'm still able to get on this thing and tell you that my God is a good God. He's a good God. He's a good, good God. He's a good, good God. But how are you living? 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 Because I'm going to keep saying it because the Holy Spirit has me saying it. You got some that are going through affliction because they're living a righteous life and it's a part of the inheritance. We don't just take on the glories of God, but we take on the sufferings too. And I have word to back that up if the Holy Spirit allows me to get to the word so we can finish up on part two. So you have, you have the people that are going through the affliction because they are obedient and the devil is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. He's trying to make you feel like you're not walking in promise. And then you have the people, but see our affliction and hear me clearly, the people that are going through affliction because they are being honorable and they're being obedient to God. It is making them stronger. It is taking them to the next dimension. And while they're going through it, God is pruning some things. He's removing this person out their life because that person don't mean them no good. He's taking this away from them so he can replace them with an innovative spirit. So now they're working for themselves. Come on, somebody. He's using it to edify the kingdom. 
kingdom. So you're not really going through anything. You're being edified and he's changing you. He's turning you into a new creation. Okay? But then you have some that are living in disobedience and they're going through what they're going through. They have no peace. They feel like they have no hope. Depression after depression. They can't see through the waves and through the sea of things because they're not attentive to God. They don't hear him. So they're going after one affliction after the next affliction because they don't want to let certain things go. God is saying, take my yoke. It's easy for you. He says, cast all your anxieties on me. But some of us don't want to do that because we're so comfortable in the way we're living. But then we have to realize to every reaction, there's an action. So whatever you're doing, you're just receiving the repercussions of how you are living. Amen. Amen. Because let me tell you something. Everything that I've been through, even just this recent thing, having to bury my baby sister. Do you guys, that's why I tell you to get the book. I told you in the book that when my mother gave birth to her, I was 13 years old and I gave birth to my little sister. I delivered her. My mother pushed her out and I delivered that baby on my mother's couch. And then I had to turn around and stand over that baby as God called her home and then had to preach that funeral. Don't you tell me that it's not a good God. But he graced me to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying to y'all? He graced me to do it. He gave me the peace that surpasses all understanding. I don't know why I'm still standing. Matter of fact, I do. It's because of the God that lives in me. It's because I said yes and I gave him the will. So no matter what circumstances come against me, I cry. I cry. I cry and my kids will tell you, they'll testify to it. I'm not in here cursing them out. I'm not in here mistreating them. I'm not putting them off to this babysitter and that babysitter because I just can't take it. We in here making memories. We're laughing together. There's peace and there's happiness in here. I've got things. That's why I say I'm the richest woman alive. And it, it ain't about the tangible. It ain't about what's in my bank account. It's not about what I wear because what I've got in this house can no man take from me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to stop looking past the tangible and you got to start looking in the spiritual realm because my Bible says seek first the kingdom and all things will be added. It will be added to you. It will be added to you. The business will grow. The business will grow. The co-workers at the job, when you start praying enough, they will start acting so nice because the Bible says when you treat them good and you pray over them, it keeps coals over their head. It'll start bugging you out how nice they'll start being to you. The sickness will leave when you just get up and take your shower and say, I'm going to push through this thing. I'm going to push through this thing because I know you got me, God, and your word cannot be void. It cannot be void. It cannot be void. I know the world says it's okay for me to be homosexual and live this way, but I'm telling you the devil is a lie because I did that too. I was sleeping with women from the age of 12 until what? 20, 26, 25, even while I was married. Amen. Come on, somebody. It's in the book. So I've been through it all and I'm telling you that God is a good God and that his word would never come back void. But it's a way that we got the, it's a way that we have to honor him and there's protocols to this thing. Don't get caught up with the grace and mercy messages. The grace and mercy is there so we can come into repentance and we can change our ways of living. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Do you hear what I'm telling you? That's what the grace and mercy is for. It is not there for us to continue to do the same old thing. Well, Saturday, I'm going to be up in the club. I'm going to be getting drunk. I'm going to do whatever I got to do. Then I'm going to get up early Sunday, get the kids to go. Then I'm going to go to church and act like I wasn't just shaking the tail feather and getting drunk. No, we come on. It's getting played out. It's getting played out. And then we wonder why we don't got no decent husbands and we unhappy because you know what? God. It's time we start living victorious. Don't worry about the tangible. Don't worry about the losses you think you're taking because they're not losses. I'm telling you, 
that every loss in my life was actually a gain. Even down to just what recently happened to me. Losing my baby sister was one of the hardest things to date. But glory to God, all of the people that are coming to Christ through that baby's death, it wasn't in vain. 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 We got to start looking at our circumstances and looking at them and assessing them and saying, is this you, is this you God? Okay, so this is God, but this ain't God. Okay, God, this is you, but this. that's why I say to pray for discernment and pray for wisdom. Because when you pray for discernment, the Holy Spirit that resides in us would tell you what's not what to do and what not to do. Quick testimony. I'm sorry. Maybe we'll try to get <clears throat> through this word. Um, I'm trying to finish up with part two. Suffering is not in vain. But when you think about it, this this is this is the teachings of why suffering is not in vain. I'll give you one of my scriptures. I try. <clears throat> excuse me. I try. Holy Spirit, please give me my voice. The devil's trying to take my voice. Give me my voice, Lord. I will try to give you the, 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 the five points that I have here. But <clears throat> this was special. This was God. This was God. And even before I came on, I prayed and I said, God, make this, make this be a teaching that would change the hearts and the mindsets of people. I'm not trying to be the best preacher to get a name for myself to sell my books. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to skip, to plant those seeds that he can water and grow to show you how to get this peace that I have. It's a peace here, y'all. It is a peace here. I am telling you that there's a peace here that no man can take from me. There is a peace here. These kids are at peace. And though we go through these things and we, and I'm telling you, if I tell you the, the things that I go through, it will blow your mind. That's why I said I put it in the second book. It will blow your mind. But there's still a peace here that surpasses all understanding because I said yes. And I just gave it to him. I gave it to him. I gave it to him. Because you know something? I could smoke all the blunts in the world and drink and drink and smoke all the Newports in the world. And it wasn't doing nothing for me, but getting me high. It wasn't doing nothing for me. The issues were still there. The insecurities were still there. The unhappiness was still there. I could sleep with this brother and feel good for that second. But right after I sleep with this brother, I'm praying and begging Jesus to forgive me for my sins. Because I knew it was wrong and now I'm so tired of myself with somebody that I ain't even going to marry. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. But then I just called on God and I said, I cast these things to you. And he gave me a confidence that I don't even know where the confidence come from. You understand what I'm saying? He gave me a peace that surpasses all understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying? That any battle that come my way, I'm like this with an S on my chest. Like, come on. What you got for me today? What you got for me today? Because it's not even about me no more. It's about y'all. It's about the people. When you say yes to God, let me tell you something. Life ain't nothing but a, a, a revolving door. You go through what you're going through so you can edify and bless somebody else. Really think about it. Really think about it. Really think about it. Even when you sit down and you talk to people that's filled with wisdom, you know, they're just passing off what they went through to show you how not to make the same mistakes and stuff that they made. Today, when I dropped my daughter off to the train for her to go to school, when I woke up this morning, I said, I'm not going to let whatever I'm going through get the best of me. I said, God, I just want to be a blessing to someone. I said, God, I just want to know that I'm still in alignment, um, that I'm still, that I still, you know, hearing from you and receiving everything you got for me. So as I was coming back, I've been, I told you that song that we played more than a conqueror. It's just been meditating to my spirit. So I'm playing my song and I'm, and I'm crying as I'm driving and I'm just worshiping God. And I'm just thanking him through everything. I'm thanking him in advance for the things that haven't come yet. I'm thanking him for the things that I, I dodged, the bullets that I dodged. I'm just thanking him. And as I'm thanking him, a, 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 um, a little uh, Caucasian lady came out of her house to, to do something with her grass or her garbage. And I seen her and God said, took, Tell her that God loves her.
So as he's telling me that I'm still driving, I'm like, God loves you. Start singing. He's like, no, tell her. I said, all right, God, I bust the Yui. I said, I'm going to be obedient because I just said, God, I want to be obedient. Test me to see if I want to be obedient. So I turn around and I beep the horn so she won't go in and she's looking and I got her attention. I said, I'm sorry, miss. I said, I don't mean to bother you, but God told me to tell you this thing. And I just want to tell you that God loves you. And he said, he told me to tell you that God loves you. And she looked at me and she said, you're not crazy because I hear from God. I have encounters with God and I hear from him and it couldn't be a better time to hear that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like right now, I needed that thing. That's why I'm telling you to be obedient and just say yes to God. Don't worry about what you're going through because if I worried about what I'm going through, I wouldn't have been able to hear from God and tell that lady that God said that he loved her. That he loved her. You don't know what she going through. We don't know. And he had a young black sister tell her at the midst of a time where racial conflict is at an all time high again. God knows what he's doing, but you got to trust him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to trust him and you got to be willing to stand out. It's, you, I feel this in my spirit. Some of you are trying to do what everybody else is doing and it's costing you. Stand out. So what? They don't get it. So what? The family going to act funny. The Bible says a prophet has no honor in his hometown anyway. So let me tell you something. The family ain't going to go and they ain't going to get it. You're going to have to keep praying and keep pressing through for them. And then after a while, they'll get it. They'll come to you and they'll be like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you got to trust God. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. Let me read the scripture and then I'm going to give you these five points and I'm out. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say the Holy, you know what? We finished part two. The Holy Spirit had his way. We didn't really, we didn't really, I didn't really get to do what I wanted to do, but this is what I want to do. I want the Holy Spirit to have his way because there's too many people that's calling they self up and they doing what they want to do. It ain't about what we want to do. It's what Christ wants us to do. It's what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. And he had his way here today. There was yokes that was broken today. There was generational curses that was broken today. There was bondages that was broken today. You guys are new creatures because of the Holy Spirit having his way. I declare it, I decree it, and I prophesy it over your life. Someone who was sick, that been going through affliction after affliction, you've been healed today. Janet, whatever you're going through, you're gonna get through it. You've been healed today. Your faith is restored. You have faith. That's why you logged on to this, sweetie, because you you have faith. You know what I represent. You knew when you were logging on that we weren't talking about the latest trends of fashion. You knew when you logged on to this thing that you was going to get a word from God. So you got all of the faith that you need, mama. Keep pushing and keep glorifying God. Amen. And whatever you guys are doing, if it's going against the word of God, let it go. And for those that are living a righteous life and doing what God has called you to do, keep doing it. Keep doing it. You're going to receive your reward. But you got to stay steadfast in this thing. And you got to let him do what he's trying to do through you. Sometimes he will have you in lack so you can call on him and don't be calling on everybody else. I'm telling you, I live it. I just had a friend on here that, that the Holy Spirit told her, listen, this girl is going through something. And she came over and she blessed me and bought me groceries. Do you hear what I'm telling you? He's a good God. You don't got to get on here and you don't got to be bitter and you don't got to be saying, why me? Why me? You just got to keep doing what God is telling you to do. My God. That's it. That's all you got to do and just let him use you. Let him use you. Let him use you. Let him have his way with you. Everything you need will be supplied. I'm telling you, I'm living it. I am living it day after day. I never come on here telling y'all something that I'm not living because I'm not fake and phony. I ain't never been and I ain't going to never do it until God call me home. I'm always going to be the realest woman out. I might not be the realest woman how I was streetwise, but I'm one of the realest Christians out. And I ain't never going to lie to y'all. I ain't never going to lie to y'all. Do you hear what I'm telling you? This walk is real. It is real. And it's going to cost you some things. And it's okay because those things that you losing, you will receive tenfold. It ain't nothing but the tangible. Really think about it. You're not losing nothing that, 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 that you need. 
In all honesty, you losing the tangible. You not losing nothing spiritually that you need because God would never do that to you. He would never do that to you. He would never take things from you that you need. And then if it seems like it's something that you need for the moment, it will all work out and he will speak to you and tell you, this is why I took it. Because the car probably was going to break down and have you on a highway driving one day and just stop and then you get in an accident and die before your time. Just trust our Abba. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. My God. I did not, the, I did not plan on coming here and, and crying and just going through the going through the spiritual motions. But I know it's needed because I know a spiritual cry when I see one. I know the prophetic spirit that God has given me. And you guys are going through it. And you feel like you got no way. But I'm telling you, you got a way out. It's in here. Yeah. It's in here and it's being on your knees and it's fasting and it's praying and it's praying without season. Just continue to pray, continue to pray. And I got to be obedient. God is telling me that some of you guys are laying around with some women and some men that you don't need to be laying with. It's time to kick them out your bed because they're stopping your purpose and it's going to cost you. They're going to end up bringing you something that you can't get away from. I'm telling you, it's going to cost you. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Some of you God is telling you to be a blessing to someone get up off your high horse and be a blessing you don't know what that person need some of you God is telling you to do what I did this morning and just tell them that good word don't worry about looking crazy I put my pride to the side and I said and I said to her what God told me to say she said where do you live I said right there 42 she said oh right there by Selena and them. I said yes ma'am she said I know them I said me too ask Selena about me my name is Fallon that lady said she needed that. That lady said she needed that. Stop rationalizing with yourself. Do what God is telling you to do. Do what God is telling you to do. I could have been depressed. I could have been depressed. Today, this month been a slow month for me. Usually I sell books after books after books. It's been a slow month for me. I could have been depressed, but I said, why? Let me just get up. My daughter's in a private school. That's one of the most expensive schools that I didn't even have to pay for. Come on, somebody. She just got that grant out of nowhere and they paid for that baby to go to school, supplied her books and everything else. I said, let me get up and go with my day and serve the God and live what I'm teaching. I'm going through it too, y'all. But it's how I choose to go through it. Let me tell you, being happy is a choice. Just like being depressed is a choice. Being happy is a choice. I'm going to read this scripture because we 1251, our hour is done. I pray that this bless you. You go ahead and y'all share this. Y'all share this video. It's going to bless somebody. The let go. Best $15 you ever spend. This book will bless y'all. I'm telling you the things that I went through, it will bless you. And it will show you how to navigate through life. For every page, there's a scripture on here in twine showing you what I went through. FallonBrownPublishing.com. FallonBrownPublishing.com. There's also a donation button up there. So many people love to bless me. You can do it through that website. FallonBrownPublishing.com. There's also blogs on that page. Okay, enough of that because I didn't come on to do that because my God supplies my needs, baby. He supplies my needs. I want to read to you guys real quick Romans chapter 5. I'm going to read from out the NIV version and then I'm going to read the um, message version. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into grace in which we now stand. And we boast in hope of glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that our suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Do not be ashamed because you hopeful because the devil will try to make you 
you feel ashamed for being hopeful. No, you keep your hope because God love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And that's what we realize what we witnessed today. The Holy Spirit used this. He used this broadcast today. It says, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely would anyone die for a righteous person through for a good person. Someone might possibly dare to die, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled through him, the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ to whom we have now received reconciliation. <clears throat> That's Romans 5. Now let me read the message part. <clears throat> A great blessing from one of my sisters that watches here, Latrice. <clears throat> she got tired of seeing me with this ripped up Bible. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> It says here in the message Bible, this is the same thing that I'm reading from the NIV, but I want to give you the message parts because the message kind of talks how we talk now. <clears throat> it says by entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set right with him, make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his doors to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. That's what we did today. We praised. We praised our way through. We broke bondages by praising. Amen. <clears throat> There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we are hemmed in with troubles. Do you hear that? I'm going to say it again. There's more to come. We continue to shout out our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patient in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next in alert expectancy such as this we never left feeling short changed do you hear that oh glory to god quite the contrary we can't round up enough containers to hold up to hold everything god generally generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. Do you hear that? He says he does not wait for us to get ready, but he pours out into us. Come on, somebody. It said he presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for. And we can understand how someone good and noble can inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial um, death while we were of no use whatever to him who oh my god that just summed up everything my god my god my god that is romans 5 that was out of the niv study bible and that was out of the message you guys can read that up again um, romans 5 that was 1 through 11 and i read from romans 5 uh one through eight and let me finish up so I can be evened out because I wrote through, I read through 11 on the NIV. It says here, verses 9 through 11. Now that we are set right by God, means of this sacrificial death, the, the um, consume of blood sacrifice, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God by the sacrificial death of his son. Now that we are at our best, just think of our, how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life now whoo thank you jesus now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with god because it's a relationship it's not a religion it's a relationship 
It says, now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plodging prowls. We sing and shout out our praises to God through Jesus the Messiah. Mm. Woo! That was good. Okay, I just want to give you guys real quick because we ran out of time. Okay, the PowerPoint. Number one. My sufferings does not mean that I'm forsaken. It bears fruit, the glory of the of Christ. So, number one, my sufferings doesn't mean that I'm forsaken. It bears fruit to glorify Christ. It bears it bears fruit, okay? The glory of Christ. Number two, through every step, God is with us. Number two, through every step, God is with us. Number three, sufferings produce character that edifies the kingdom. So that just sums up your sufferings is not in vain, that it will bless someone down the line and it will bless you, or it is or is building character character in you. So sufferings, number three, sufferings produce character that edifies the kingdom. Number four, everything will be added. Don't focus on the losses. So whatever you feel like you're losing, you will gain it. The Bible says that he gives you a hundredfold. So whether it's your car, relationships, whatever it is, you will gain something a hundredfold. I tell you, God called my baby sister home and I have gained so many sisters and brothers through her death that seek the, uh, 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 me bring forth the eulogy and seek the strength in me that Christ has used me through her death. So I actually gained so much through her get her through her death some of you will catch that later number five the last one unconditional love is required always don't you never lose your stance you are to stand firm in unconditional love with Christ you love him unconditionally too many of us have condition on our love you just like how you have that unconditional love for that no good brother that's doing you dirty or that no good sister that is the same unconditional love that we we are supposed to have for our Abba. We know that our love for him is unconditional because his love for us is unconditional. Don't have your love conducive and be conditioned because of the things he do from you. You have to be, have stand firm and have to have that love, not be shaken about what's going on around you because the enemy comes to still kill and destroy. I pray that this word blesses you. This was a great word. My God talking about powerful you guys share this thing you guys be blessed everything that we prayed for everything that we broken everything that we spoke you walk in that you walk in it i want to be real with you some of you guys guys as soon as i press finish on this thing the enemy is going to try and come and he's going to try to come and steal this word from you stand fast don't you allow that thing to be taken from you trust god stand fast on that on this word that we received today and don't be shaken actually rebuke the brother or the sister rebuke the thing that's trying to come against you when i press finish because it's gonna try he's gonna try to steal your joy because you have a I, I know i can feel it in my spirit there's a peace now you some of you have a peace that you didn't have in the beginning of this broadcast don't you be a fool don't you be filled with folly don't you let nobody take that peace from you you understand what i'm saying hold on to that that peace hold on to that thing hold on hold on hold on to that thing and rebuke them in the name of Jesus and go about your day whatever God is telling you to do be a blessing to somebody remember FallonBrownPublishing.com for some of you who do not have the book we have ebook that you can just download it right to your device or you can get the soft copy tomorrow I'll be shipping out some shipments so if you want to get them get it um shipped out by tomorrow you can do you can make your um um, my God, I am so high off the Holy Spirit. You can make your purchases today. All right, I am out. I love you guys. Our hour is up. I love you to health. I love you to health. Share this.